Welcome to week eight. This week, we will begin our study of unsupervised learning methods. And we're going to start this study with one type of unsupervised learning method known as dimensionality reduction. This, um, this approach of dimensionality reduction is very important, and you're going to run into it in many areas of machine learning. So it's, it's important to um, know something about it. So l let me begin by just drawing a couple pictures to, um, to help us understand what unsupervised learning and dimensionality reduction in particular are all about. So what we've been doing so far is we've been studying relationships like this. I, I have an X matrix. So this is my X matrix. I have P variables in this X matrix. And what I, what, I, what I also have is a y vector. So y1 through yn. And so in the first seven weeks of this class, we've studied the following problem. We've just said that each of my y values, so y sub i is going to be one of the elements in y, is some function of some row vector, so the corresponding row vector, uh, plus some errors. And my goal has been to estimate this function f. And so we've done that with uh, linear functions, we've done that with trees, we've done that with uh, smoothers, we've, we've tried a lot of different things. So that's the supervised learning problem. The unsupervised learning problem is where we only get an X matrix. So we don't get any Y's, we only get X's. And then the question is, are there interesting patterns or features uh, you know, in this X matrix that I can study? Well, the dimensionality reduction problem is going to look for the following types of features. So in order to understand this, let's take a very simple situation where I have p equal to two x's, and so here's x1, here's x2. And let's say I observe a, the following scatter plot, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm rigging this to have a very strong correlation between x1 and x2. So what we want our dimensionality reduction method to, to note is there's a very strong correlation between these points, and they really fall in a lower dimensional subspace. That's a lot of fancy language, but the, the, the fancy language means that I can find a line that passes through the middle of these data points that um, it, it, we're going to see that it explains most of the variance in these, in, in, in these, uh, in these two dimensions. So what, what do I mean by that? Well, what we're going to be doing um, is this. We're going to be projecting each one of these points onto the line. So these are the projection. This is what, what is called a projection of, of the point onto the line. Uh, so, so let me kind of blow up what I mean by a projection. So if I had a point and I had some line, the projection is going to be the point on the line that is closest to it. And so what that means is that this is a right angle. Okay, so if I chose some other point, like if I chose this point, that wouldn't be a projection because this line is longer than this line. Likewise, this line would be longer than this line. So, <coughs> pardon me, that is the projection of this ax onto the line. All right, so what I'm really trying to do with principal components analysis is find a line so that these, um, these projections, the sum of these, these lengths of the projections is as small as possible. That's one, um, one objective function that we can write out to identify this line. Now, why is this called dimensionality reduction? Well, ordinarily, if I had a point, so let's just take this point right here, um, I would need two coordinates to describe that the location of that point. What I'm going to do with principal components analysis is use the length of, of this 
line. So how far from the origin uh, to this point, and that's going to be called the first principal component. So we'll just call that PC1. And so the first principal component um, describes, approximately describes the location of this point. Okay, so why, why do I say approximately? Well, I'm going to ignore this little bit between the line and the point. And, and we've chosen the line to make that very small. And so this one-dimensional coordinate is going to be an approximate way to describe this point. And so I, I get most of the information that, um, that these two coordinates have with just this one coordinate. And that, that becomes really important. Um, just for your information, the second principal component is going to be the distance between the line and the point. All right, so that's why it's called dimensionality reduction. Instead of using two coordinates, I'm only going to need one to describe the, these points. And so you can think about using half the, um, uh, half the, you know, the information to, to characterize these points by just using one dimension. Well, I, I want to kind of review how this is different from regression. So what was regression all about? Well, in regression, we would start out with a very similar scatter plot. So maybe this is my scatter plot. But I would choose a slightly different line. Okay, so maybe I would choose this line instead. That's, a, that's meant to be a line. And how did we choose that line? Well, we chose the line back in regression to minimize the sum of squared vertical deviations. Why did we do that? Well, in regression, we say that y is special. So y we called the dependent variable, and we wanted to see how that y depends on all of our x's. And, and since that y is special, we choose the line to minimize the sum of uh, errors in, in the y direction. So we, we minimize this function in regression, saying take the y, minus the y hat, the y hats were the points in the line, and make that deviation as small as possible. In principal components analysis, we're not going to say that x2 is special, or we're not going to say that x1 is special. They have equal status, and therefore, in determining this line, I'm going to give them equal weight. So, so let me just um, mention one more thing about what is this deviation. Using Pythagorean theorem, we could say this deviation is, well, how much are, are you off in the x2 direction and how much are you off in the x1 direction? So we're going to find this squared length and this squared length, which gives the squared length of the, you know, the, the, the 90 degree projection onto the line. All right, so that's, a, that's, that's one way to think about this. Second column vector plus all the way through uh, the kth uh, constant times the kth column vector. Now these c's, I, I, I call them c here because of uh, two, two words. You can either think of constant or coordinate. So, so these are constants, but they're also going to be called coordinates with respect to these u vectors. So let's um, uh, let's talk about a basis now. So a basis is is um, a set of vectors that have two properties. So they're linearly independent of one another, and they're going to span the space. 